Mtazamaji popote pale ulipo unatumai kuwa weekend yako ya kuendea vema kabisa niruhusu ni kumkue hujambo na karibu sana kwenye taarifa za Afrika Mashariki siku ya leo ikiwa ni Jumapili tarehe nane mwezi Julai mwaka mbili na kumi na nane taarifa hizi za kuja moja kwa moja kutoka jiji kuu la Kenya hapa ni Nairobi mtazamaji tena nasema karibu sana lakini kwanza kabisa hebu tupate bidokezo extend the exercise of work permit verification it must be honest it will not be extended 22nd july is the last day waziri wa usalama wa ndani nchini kenya atoa makataa ya siku sitini kwa raia wa kigeni kupata vibali vya kazi kwanza la sivyo wafurushwe you reduce the uh, rate of reinfection due to any other diseases in, in that lab setting Nchini Uganda upo uvumbuzi unawezesha madaktari kutambua chembe chembe za malaria bila kuwatoa damu wagonjwa. Kweli nazungumza kwa dhati mimi nawakaribisha sana hapa. Tuwe pamoja. Sisi hapa ni vijana kwa hiyo mimi naona nimekuja leo kujifunza na kupata busara za wazee. Rais wa Tanzania John Pombe Magufuli apoteza umaarufu Tanzania utafiti wa hivi punde umeashiria. Rais wa Malawi Peter Mutharika asema hata ngatuka mamlakani huku akipuzilia mbali madai ya ufisadi. We wanted a special identity and we wanted Mombasa to be Instagramable. Na katika maisha Afrika wiki hii tunaangazia sura mpya ya Mombasa, mji wa pili mkuu nchini Kenya. Na karibu sasa mtazamaji tuanze hizi taarifa na Emery Mwoki basi anatufungulia taarifa zetu siku ya leo ambapo waziri wa usalama wa ndani daktari Fred Matiangi ametoa makataa ya siku sitini kwa wafanyikazi wote kutoka nje ya nchi kuweza kupata vibali vya kazi la sivyo basi watafukuzwa nchini hebu tupata hiyo taarifa Zikiwa zimesalia siku kumi na nne tu kufikia mwisho wa makataa yaliyotolewa na waziri wa usalama wa ndani ema hili la usajili lililoko kwenye afisi za uhamiaji hufurika pomoni kila Jumapili raia wa kigeni wakikimbia kujaribu kupambana na wakati angalau kupata vibali vyao tayari zaidi ya watu elfu kumi na nane wamepokea vibali vya kazi kwenye operesheni hiyo iliyoanzishwa na waziri Fred Matiangi mwezi Mei 21. We will not extend the exercise of work permit verification. It must be honest, it will not be extended. 22nd July is the last day. After that, we will remove from our country any illegal immigrants. Takwimu za Wizara ya Usalama wa Ndani zinaonyesha kuwa raia wa kigeni walio na vieti halali za kazi ni 1034 huku zaidi ya 1065 wakiwa bado hawajasajiliwa. Matiangi amesema raia wa kigeni wanaofukuzwa nchini watalazimika kujilipia nauli endapo bunge itaidhinisha mabadiliko ya sheria kwenye kipenge cha usalama. I anticipate that if we don't clean up this exercise as we are doing it now We are going to require to spend sometimes up to about 500 million shillings to transport uh, people out of the country. Raia wa kigeni wasiohitaji kujisajilisha ni watalii, wanafunzi, wanadiplomasia na wataalamu wanaofanyia mashirika ya kimataifa. Mary Mwoki, KTN News. Na nchini Tanzania mtazamaji ni kwa mbunge wa siku nyingi Profesa Maji Marefu na aliyefahamika pia kwa fani yake ya uganga ameaga dunia akiwa katika mwaka wake wa 62. Raja Bahasan kutoka Dar es Salaam basi ameandaa hiyo taarifa. Hospitali ya taifa ya Muhimbili ilitoa taarifa kifo cha mwanasiasa Steven Hilari Ngonyani ama alivyofahamika na wengi Profesa Maji Marefu ambaye ameaga dunia Julai 3 mwaka huu wakati akipatiwa matibabu katika hospitali hii. Steven Ngonyani amefariki akiwa na umri wa miaka sitini na miwili na amekuwa mbunge wa jimbo la Korogwe vijijini kaskazini mashariki mwa Tanzania tangu mwaka na kumi kupitia CCM wadau wa kada mbalimbali wametuma salamu za rambi rambi kwa familia yake na pia watanzania wanaomboleza kifo cha mwanasiasa huyo kutokana na wadhifa alionao lakini hakujali 
wala haku, hakuwa na ule uthamani kwa sababu kuna tunaona kuna watu wenye pesa wa, na viongozi mbalimbali wanakuwa kwa sababu tu kiongozi basi anakuwa anajiona lakini profesa Maji Malefu alikuwa anashirikiana na jamii kufanya mambo ambayo yanahusu jamii kama kulikuwa na mafuliko na yeye anakuwa anaokoa kwa mikono yake sio kwa kutumia watu kwa mikono yake anakuwa anaokoa vitu ambavyo vina vina vina, vina, vina na maji lakini pia tunaona mambo mengi tu ya maendeleo ambayo amefanya katika jimbo lake kwa hivyo na imani kabisa jimbo lake litakuwa limepata pigo kubwa sana kutokana na kwamba yeye alikuwa ni kiungo muhimu sana katika jimbo hilo kwanza mimi mwanzo nilikuwa huyu jamaa nilikuwa simuelewi. Kwa nikafikiria mtu wa mganga kienyeji anaweza kuwa mbunge na kwenda kusaidia wananchi wake. Lakini amefanya vitu ambaye ni wonderful zaidi hata wale maprofesa wenye PhD zao. Ukiangalia ule mfuko wa jimbo alivyokuwa anafanya, amekwenda miingiza kwa wananchi wake wale wali ya chini, amesaidia mambo mengi sana kiasi kwamba hata yule mtu ambaye alikuwa amesoma na ma PhD yake ameenda nje nchi. Lakini mtu ameingia kama mbunge ameingia kama mganga wa kienyeji na ni standard 7 yule Profesa Maji Marefu alitanguliwa na mke wake aliyefariki mapema Juni sita mwaka huu Kabla ya kuwa mbunge Profesa Maji Marefu alifahamika sana kama mganga na mtaalamu wa tiba za asili aliyejulikana hadi mataifa jirani kutokana na shughuli zake za uganga kujadiliwa katika majukwaa mtandaoni Steven Ngonyani almaarufu Profesa Maji Marefu Nchini Kenya alifahamika kama mganga wa kienyeji. Hapa nchini Tanzania anafahamika kama mbunge maarufu. Msiba wake umewagusa wengi na wengi wameeleza yale ambayo hawato ya sahau kuhusu yeye. Rajabu Hassan, Kenya News, Dar es Salaam. Taifa la Rwanda limekuwa la kwanza kabisa kutuma idadi kubwa kabisa wanajeshi wa jinsia ya kike katika taifa la Sudan Kusini kuimarisha usalama tazamaji ni taarifa ambayo imeandaliwa naye Tobias Chanji kutoka kaunti ya Kwale hapa nchini Kenya. Kundi la maafisa wa polisi 160 kutoka nchini Rwanda wametumwa Juba ambao ni mji mkuu wa taifa la Sudan Kusini. Polisi hawa watahusika na kuweka amani katika taifa hilo kwa mwaka mmoja chini ya umoja wa kimataifa. Kitengo hiki cha polisi wa Rwanda kinajumuisha wanaume 80 na wanawake 80 hatua hii kiwa ni ya kwanza kwa polisi wanawake. Hii kiwa ni hatua ya umoja wa kimataifa kuhakikisha kuna usawa wa jinsia katika maafisa wa kulinda usalama katika mataifa yanayotatizika kiusalama. It will be a good thing to women for this the community of South Sudan but even for women all over the world because they will know that women can do anything when she is empowered she can do anything as a, as a man polisi hao watapiga kambi katika mji wa Juba japo ikibidi watatumwa katika maeneo mengine ya taifa hilo maafisa hao wamepokea mafunzo ya kiwango cha juu na haswa kuhusiana na dhuluma za kijinsia kutoa ushauri pamoja na kutekeleza majukumu yao ya amani wanatarajiwa kufanya kazi katika sehemu za wakimbizi Tedi Ruyenzi ni kamanda wa polisi wa Rwanda jijini Juba na wale wamepata ujuzi wa kuweka amani katika mataifa ya Haiti na Mali. Uh, Normally in handling uh, like GBV cases, cases against children. So uh, we found it it's uh, the, the women police officers they are the ones who can do the job better compared to men. Kumekuwa na mapigano katika taifa la Sudan Kusini tangu mwisho wa mwaka 2013 miaka miwili tu baada ya kupata uhuru. Tobias Chanji, KTN News. Na katika siasa humu nchini Kenya ni kuwa zipo sauti zinazokinzana katika chama tawala chama cha Jubilee. Baadhi wadau wanasema kuwa tofauti hizi zinaletwa na ukuruba wake Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na Kinara wa NASA Raila Odinga. Jeff Kirui ameandaa hiyo taarifa. Uswahiba kati ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na Raila Odinga umeonekana kuleta mganganyiko baina ya wafuasi wa viongozi hawa wawili. Hususan chamani jubili ambapo wapo wanaopaza sauti zao kwamba naibu rais William Ruto anapitia mtiani mgumu katika safari yake ya siasa. This country cannot stop to deal with the problems of the day which have been aptly identified in the memorandum uh, that that our party leader signed with the party leader of Jubilee uh, and, and 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 hinge it on the ambitions of William Ruto. We say that we completely reject that and Kenya's problem as of today is William Ruto. 
Mapatano kati ya Rais Kenyatta na Raila Odinga hususan Odinga kuhusishwa kwenye maamuzi kuhu serikali ni ukitili wa doa na wadau wa jubilii haswa wa ndani wa naibu Rais Ruto wanaotazamia ni njama ya Odinga kujipanga kwa uchaguzi mkuu ujao. The reality is that we are prepared for Raila Odinga's candidature. Um, we think that um, and we believe that competition is a good thing that the handshake was fantastic that uh, that handshake opened doors for us to now focus on development to focus on issues to if there, are, there, are, there is any agenda to come to Jubilee to do what he has done to so many other parties before I don't think there, there is a chance if you look at the reasons why Jubilee members are fighting it's about uh, the president uh, taking his work very seriously and wanting to install a legacy that Kenyans would remember. Remember the president is, is uh, serious about fighting corruption and uh, most uh, members of parliament align, align to deputy president are the ones who are fighting, uh, fighting, against, uh, the, fighting the president against his push for co uh, corruption cartels to be arraigned in court. So basically, this was our, we are out of this was. Remember, we are, we are not in government. We are out of government. We don't attend uh, Jubilee party meeting. The deputy president has two choices. Whether he wants to be the president of this country or is working towards becoming the official position leader. If he wants to be the president, he must uh, reign into Ndwale, reign into Oscar Sudi, reign into Murkomen, and uh, put them to order and say, gentlemen, I'm gunning for the top seat of the nation. We must, can, we cannot continue like this. We, this is not an election. We must repackage ourselves. We are gunning for the top seat. But if he's gunning for the official position leader, then he's on the right track. Let him maintain the gentlemen. Let them continue doing what they are doing. Naibu Rais William Ruto kupande waki akijitokeza kwa minu ya juu. Hakipenyeza mizizi yake katika maeneo ya magaribi na puani kuwavuta wandani wa Raila Odinga. Miongoni mwao mbungi wa malindi Aisha Jumwa ambaye sasa chama chake cha ODM kinatishia kumbandua kama kamishna kutoka tume ya huduma za bunge PSC. The people who are uncomfortable with other leaders shaking hands with the deputy president are the very people who are saying that we needed to have this uh, handshake for purpose of taking the country forward. In everything William set out to say, including his tweet, uh, 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 the very day this, this handshake was undertaken, uh, he was not in it, he has never been in it. Uh, his sole agenda is how he gets to, to take power in 2022. Kwa sasa baadhi ya wanajubili wanashinikiza kuwepo mkutano wa wadau wote chamani kutuliza joto linalodai wa kuchoche wa kila kukicha. Jeff, Kirui KTN News. Na tukelekea nchini Tanzania ni kuwa rais wa taifa hilo John Pombe Magufuli anatafuta busara za wazee wikilopita basi alikutana na marais waliostaafu pamoja pia na viongozi wengine ikiwa ni mkutano wa kwanza kabisa kwake John Pombe Magufuli kufanya hivyo tangu kuchaguliwa mwaka 2015 Rajab Hassan ameandaa hiyo taarifa kwa kina Ni kwa mara ya kwanza rais daktari John Pombe Magufuli kualika kwa wakati mmoja maraisi wa stafu na viongozi wengine wa stafu ikulu jijini Dar es Salaam. Taarifa ya ikulu imesema rais amekutana na viongozi hao wa stafu ili kupokea ushauri na maoni yao juu ya uendeshaji wa serikali na mustakabali wa taifa na rais amewaeleza wa stafu hao maendeleo ya serikali ya wami ya tano katika kuimarisha elimu miundo mbinu na ukusanyaji mapato kweli nazungumza kwa dhati mimi nawakaribisha sana hapa tuwe pamoja sisi hapa ni vijana kwa hiyo mimi naona nimekuja leo kujifunza na kupata busara za wazee miongoni mwaliohudhuria ni rais mstaafu wa awamu ya pili al hassan mwinyi benjamin mkapa rais wa awamu ya tatu na waziri mkuu wa zamani edward lowasa Raisi anakutana na viongozi hao ikiwa ni siku moja tu baada ya kuwaapisha mawaziri na watendaji wengine wa serikali baada ya kufanya mabadiliko ya baraza la mawaziri mabadiliko yaliyomweka nje ya ofisi waziri wa mambo ya ndani Mwigulu Nchemba mabadiliko yaliyofanywa yanapokelewa vyema na asasi za kiraia nchini Raisi ameitikia wito ambao asasi za kiraia tumekuwa tuki, tukitoa siku nyingi kwa sababu mabadiliko yaliyofanywa kwa mfano kwenye nafasi ya waziri wa mambo ya ndani ni ambao tulikuwa tume, tumeomba siku nyingi sana kwamba waziri wa mambo ya ndani awajibike mtakumbuka tulikuwa tuna 
tunaongelea swala la la watu wasiojulikana kwenye ripoti yetu tumeandika ripoti ya haki za binadamu ya mwaka jana ripoti ya mwaka juzi yetu tumeandika kwamba kwa nini wizara husika isiwajibike ikumbukwe wizara ya mambo ya ndani imeshuhudia mabadiliko kadhaa tangu mwaka 2016 Rais Daktari Magufuli alipomfuta kazi waziri wa wakati huo bwana Chazi Kitwanga kwa kosa la ulevi akiwa kazini. Nafasi iliyochukuliwa na Mwigulu Nchemba anaeka nje ya ofisi kwa sasa baada ya kuhudumu kwa miaka miwili na kumpisha Kange Lugola. Rajab Hassan Keche News Dar es Salaam. Mtazamaji nchini Uganda ni kwa bana moja kwa jina Brian Gita amefanya uvumbuzi wa kubaini wapo mgonjwa wa anachembechembe za malaria ndani ya mwili wake basi kutolewa damu. Ni taarifa yake Raquel Mwigai. Brian Gita ambaye ni mhandisi wa programu ndiye mshindi wa tuzo la Royal Academy of Engineering sababu kuu ikiwa ni uvumbuzi wake ambao umeonekana kwenye maendeleo katika sekta ya afya. Ni uvumbuzi ambao utaweza kutambua chembe chembe za malaria mwilini kwa kutumia mwanga kwenye kidole cha mgonjwa. Teknolojia hiyo inatambua vimelea vya malaria pasi kuwepo kwa vipimo vya damu. Mfumo huo ambao unajulikana kama matibabu utamlazimu daktari kuunganisha boriti ya mwanga kwenye tarakilishi ambapo matokeo yataonyeshwa. Mwanga za mwekundu kwenye kifaa hicho huweza kutambua kiwango cha viini vyekundu vya damu pamoja na umbo na pia rangi ambazo wakati mwingi huathiriwa na vimelea vya malaria. The patient holds still and inserts their finger into this device and then uh, the device um, is started with either the phone or the laptop that is connected to the device uh, holding still for two minutes. Uh, the patient leaves their finger into the curvature for the device and uh, as after the, the sampling the results are sent to 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 the laptop or to the phone to show whether you have malaria or not katika sekta ya afya ni jambo la muhimu sana kwani matokeo yatakuwa moja kwa moja na hivyo basi kulinda afya ya mgonjwa kabla ya ugonjwa kuenea mwilini one of the biggest competitive advantage we have uh, for the ultimate is being non invasive which is you reduce uh, rate of reinfection due to any other diseases in, in the lab setting um, the other biggest advantage we have is time the rdt takes about 15 minutes that's when from the time blood is drawn and then uh, put on the strip and you wait for the results to come out the microscope on the other hand takes about 30 minutes to get a conclusive result and the matibabu kit takes two minutes to have those results visible to you so that the turnover time for the patients in the queues is higher and that the, and improving the um uh, the, the rate at which the doctors deliver the medication and everything aidha itapunguza gharama kwa wagonjwa na kuzuia matibabu ya kibinafsi kwa wale wanaogopa kufika hospitalini kutolewa damu Gita mwenye umri wa miaka 24 ndiye wa kwanza kutoka taifa la Uganda kushinda tuzo hilo pamoja na shilingi milioni 3.3 pesa taslim. Raquel Mwigai KT News Afrika Mashariki. Napumzika lakini katika sehemu ya pili tutakuwa nayo taarifa hii kuhusiana na maisha Afrika. Naomba usikose manake siku leo tunaangazia sura mpya ya kaunti ya Mombasa. Usiende mbali.